Hi, I'm Birdman Mel, and I am so very happy you joined us tonight. We're going to have some fun. We're going to be seeing, you know, we're gonna, I'm going to use my little squeeze birds again. Is one of these guys your favorite? I hope so. If not, tell me what your favorite bird is and tell me, you know, what you need help on. How, you know, we're going to try to tell you what seed each of these favorites like, and we're going to tell you what kind of feeder to put her in. And we're going to tell you not only that, but, you know, where to place a feeder, because that's one of the secrets of getting the birds you want is putting the right seed in the right feeder at the right location. Pretty, like my son says, easy peasy, you know, not that hard. But we're also going to have some fun, so ask your questions, send them my way, and let me know where you're from. That'll help me know whether I spend more time on this bird or that bird, and it'll help you win a prize, okay? And the other thing I want you to make sure you do is share, share, share this with your friends. Tag a friend, tell somebody, hey, you want to get the birds you want in your backyard, you need to get on here with old Birdman Mel, and that'll help you win prizes too, okay? Other thing I'd love to hear from you is what's going on in your yard. I got to tell you, today was incredible in mine. My wife and I were having our morning coffee out on the deck, a little cold here in central Missouri, and holy moly, we have had, you know, they may have closed the Canadian border, but we got a bunch of folks from the north that came on across. My feeders were as busy as they've been in days and days and days. And what happened? The pine siskins came across. And you know when they come to party, I think the goldfinch just said, we're not letting them have the feeder. And the cardinal said, well, I, I got to hang in there. And before I know it, everybody was there today. So if you had to have many feeders, make sure you do what I did. I had just cleaned out all my feeders and I put, what's my favorite bird seed? Quick, answer quick. Okay, I'm going to tell you, party hearts. I love these sunflower kernels and so do the pine siskins. So do the finches and everybody else. So we had a party today on the deck, so it was lots and lots of fun. The next thing that happened is a woodpecker come by, a hairy. He looked over at Birdman Man and he said, Birdman Mel, do you realize this hook is empty where you had this feeder before? Oh, you put it over there. Well, thank God he went to it, but it's amazing. Lots of birds, not just the hummingbirds, will kind of look you in the eye and let you know when you don't have things like they've been used to it. So we'll talk about other birds that love this feeder too, but it was an amazing day on the deck this morning. But tell me about your day. Put something in about what you saw and where you're at and where you saw it and what was it on, okay? And speaking of what was it on, we're gonna start a new contest tonight. And it's a contest from now through the spring. I want you to go and you know one of my goals is for you to shop local. Go to that family business and check out if you don't already own a Songbird Essentials or a Backyard Essentials feeder, go in there and get one. Be it that Wild Bird store, that Lawn and Garden Center, that nursery, those people that are serious about birding, some gift stores, and say, I want one of them Songbird Essentials, and we'll give you some great ideas this week and next, and then take some photos. And anybody that sends a photo in, we're going to send back an appropriate prize. And I'll tell you the details later. And speaking of prizes, we just finished the owl contest, and oh my gosh, we got some incredible photos in. And I think they're going to have it up on the screen, but I'm very happy to announce that Kathleen, Janet, you got number one. Absolutely love this photo. I just love it, love it, love it. And it's a great big picture of a smiling owl. And I love the humor in that guy. Don't you just love him? And I got to tell you, I want you to help me say, what do you think's on his mind? What do you think he wish he could? He was saying if we were there? I just love trying to figure out what a bird's saying, you know? I see that in the Birds in Bloom magazine. They do that a lot of times. They have you answer a, you know, what's the, uh, what's, what's the, what do you think the right quote for this is? So when you send photos in, if you've got a quote you think you like, hey, put her on there, okay? And I need to say that, hey, second place, we had a bunch of great uh, things, but Kim Jacobson, those three uh, owls you have there together are just incredible. Love that photo. And Debbie, I hope I say this right, Baba Shining. That barred our photo was third to none. I mean, I barred everybody else. That was bad humor. But anyhow, loved all three of you, and we're going to post all the other photos, and I can't thank each of you. Oh, my God, I forgot to show you. And I got Kevin Offerman here helping me. The first place got this really neat, don't know if you can see it. It's a wordy gig with little owls of golden down. Love that, that, that thing. This here is a welcome thing. Second place is going to get. In third place is Intriguing Owls. And really, if one of you likes one of the other ones better than the ones in the order I got, you can pick in that order. But some really neat gifts. This is a great book. Uh, 
you know, from Gas Witch Arthur that Mel always likes, Dan Tequila. So great, great prizes, okay? So thank you all, all of you that send in the photos. Love, love, love you doing it. Now let's get on with the show. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about clinging birds. And I got a question. Name me what Birdman Mel is going to call a clinging bird, okay? You win a prize there, okay? Name that. And then we're going to talk about woodpeckers, or maybe not necessarily in this order. We're going to talk about finches. Tell me a couple finches that are coming across the border right now. Hint, I gave you one of them a little bit earlier, but he's also got a buddy that's coming too, okay? We're going to talk about cardinals and bigger billed birds like grosbeaks. We're going to talk about bluebirds. Much of the country, they're, they stay around. They just drift a little bit, and you can feed them in the wintertime. We're going to talk about blue jays and scrub jays. We're going to talk about native sparrows and juncos. And we're even going to circle back, give a, just a real brief reminder of what I think you can do to attract more hummingbirds and more orioles next spring with feeders and what. So if there's another bird you want to get, hey, let me know. We will uh, we'll talk about that too, okay? So let's get started with my favorite question again. I'm going to give a lot of prizes tonight, so stay tuned. Tell others to join us. What's a clinging bird, okay? What's my... I gave you the answer. I was going to ask what's my favorite. I already gave it to you. Clinging birds, okay? And I already asked you what a clinging bird is. Well, what's the guy that goes... And he goes, grabs one seed, and he goes, eats. He goes, grab one seed, goes, eats. Of course, a chickadee, a black cat chickadee, and he's my favorite clinger. There's another clinger that goes, beater, 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 out in the woods. What bird is that? I'll tell you in a second. And there's another guy, he ain't got no sense, always going head first down the tree, okay? You'd think he'd get dizzy doing that thing. And there's one of his buddies, again, coming across the border, redheaded. I'm going to go backwards, Okay. It's going to be a red-headed nuthatch, okay? And that Peter, 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 that was Mr. Titmouse. And, of course, Mr. Chickadee. And all these guys are birds that really cling on to little places to eat. And they're used to running up and down the tree trunk, not necessarily upside down like that nuthatch. So what I recommend is my favorite feeder for them is these little clingers only. They can just hang on this here little thing here. And, of course, what am I going to put in this? You got it. Sunflower kernels, they love them. And they just hang here, and they got a neat little place for them to eat. And I love putting it on our windows. We have these on our windows at home. You know, you just stick this thing on there, and they come right up to eat. Really, really like that. Or if you don't want to hang your clingers there, neat little, you know, we bend this plastic here in Mexico, neat little feeders just to get them up to eat. But all the clingers like to run up and down a tree, and they just grab a little bite, go off and eat, and come back. I wish, I wish I could teach all my grandkids to be that neat. But they're, they're pretty cool about it. And if you don't like green, I like red. And I am noticing more and more, you're going to see me doing a lot of red. Old Birdman Mel is getting more convinced than he ever was that you get choice. And I've been switching these around. And I don't know if some of you watch, but Sarah Hill in our Columbia, Missouri market had did some blind taste tests. Moving seed, our seed versus big box seed. Guess what? The seed I'm telling you about kicked their tail. They liked our seed a whole lot better. She was so kind, came in Saturday, the open house. Got to see her, hadn't seen her in a while, and then, holy moly, somebody sent me that post. So, God bless you, Sarah, for sharing that. But anyhow, red, I've been seeing, I think when they buzz around through the world, they see red, they say, hmm, that looks like a big honking berry. I think I'll go down and get it. I don't know, but I'm seeing when birds first come, many, many times it's on my red feeders. So keep that in mind. And in the summertime, it's pretty cool because, hey, that helps bring the hummers down, too. They go around looking and say, well, really nice feeder, Mel, but where in the world is the nectar, you know? But... Those are my favorites as far as clinging birds, although this guy right here, remember that guy that the woodpecker talked about? I, oh, look at this. The woodpeckers are trying to hang on here and eat, and I didn't even put them on there. But uh, these seed cylinders, and this one's from Pine Tree Farms. I like this nutty one. They got one with berries in it, too. They work great in here, and this is the one that Harry came and said, Birdman Mal, you got to move that down to that other hook because that's where it was last year. So that's what I did. But they love this feeder. The rac What I like is this cage here, the raccoons and stuff. Squirrels, they don't bother much because it's kind of a pain in the hoots to get in there. So really, really good thing for clinging birds. And I will tell you, also a great thing for woodpeckers. And we'll be talking about woodpeckers next. The other thing that all those birds like is suet. And we'll be talking woodpeckers on this. But this is called tree icing from Pine Tree. You just spread this on the tree bark. Don't even got to buy a feeder. And it does a marvelous job of attracting all these clinging birds. Plus them woodpeckers and a lot of other birds will eat tree icing. It's been a gazillion. Dozens of birds have been documented eating tree icing off the thing. And it's, you know, as many, you know, what I tell you in suet, what's good? Peanuts, peanut butter, and suet. Well, pretty much, let me look on here. I hadn't looked in a while. Suet and peanut butter. Wouldn't you know it? Yep. 
good stuff, okay? So, those are my favorite cleaning feeders. So now, as I said, we're gonna go on to woodpeckers. Okay, so there's this guy here. Whoops, I think I squished a squicker. Okay, this is a great big old woodpecker. What's the biggest one called? Called a pileated woodpecker, okay? And then you got flickers, okay? And then you got the little bitty guy. He's many, many times the first guy in, and here he is, this is a downy. And that's what you hear out on the tree, just him pecking away. But downy and a chickadee, I find many, many times are the bravest, and a titmouse, they'll come up and say, like, oh, birdman Mel, what you putting out now? And they'll take a bite, and before you know it, somebody else is following them in. So take care of these guys, and rest the crowd to follow. That's part of the moral of the story. Mr. Kevin, give me some suet feeders. As I showed you the other day, these are my favorite suet feeders. Great big old things, because that pileated has got room here to put his tail, okay? So some of my favorite. We make this recycled plastic one here in Mexico, Missouri. So lots of fun. So moral of the story is wherever you get it, have this tail prop down here. Helps you. You know, that woodpecker, when he goes up a tree, he goes boom, boom, boom. This tail here, it bounces. It's his balance. Well, he's got that ear thing here, and he's just, mm, this is nice. I can kind of rest my bottom here and drink. You know, he, he likes it, okay? So really, really cool. But you talk about a suet feeder, you cannot get full or keep full. This guy here, just a piece of cedar that we have some craftsmen here in Missouri, and this is second cut. A lot of times we save these from this... Uh, over at the sawmills where you know they're gonna just grind them up for sawdust because they're using the big part for boards put these holes through here and then we have these peanut plugs and we started making these years ago and lots of people are following us but guess what still got the best because it's peanut peanut butter and suet we got one that's got hot pepper in it too keeps all them other animals away and uh, really good stuff but you know I can't imagine old chickadee goes mm -mm, hey Charlie you can't believe it you need to eat here. You can't believe how good it tastes. And before you know it, everybody, you know, the other woodpeckers are coming over. Flicker says, oh, I want to buy two, you know. So I dare you to buy one of these suet hogs from one of those locally owned stores and get some of our Songbird Essentials peanut plugs. If you don't run out of suet, you let Birdman Mel know. I'm going to send somebody to check and see if all the birds, you know, what happened in the yard. Because they love this thing. So keep it in mind, I love that feeder. You don't need the one with the pegs. We make it. But uh, you don't need it. That just invites Mr. Starlin to come by sometimes. So uh, my favorite feeders for woodpeckers, I've given you some of them. The other thing I love about my woodpeckers is I can have them up on the window. I got this feeder on a window, and Mr. Downey comes by every day, and he's pecking on this. Now, you will hear him. You will think he's pounding on the house, but he's not. He's going on this. And then if you don't want this big thing, there's this. You remember my, my passion on red? Just a little version. Uh, and, and I like this guy because I've seen the red-bellied and the uh, up against here and even a flicker one time where this one here is a little harder for them guys to hang on to so you can feed suet at your window okay fun things for those birds. okay so we've talked about woodpeckers we've talked about clingers now America's favorite bird put your guess in what is that okay I give you a hint he loves black old sunflower seeds he likes sunflower he likes sunflower kernels and who is he on the back is the cardinal you bet so I'll give you some tips on what kind of thing to feed him in First of all, I love trays, and so do cardinals. Now, if I want the cardinal, I'm raising this tray up like this, and he can get in. But if it's getting to where, hey, I want a different feeder for little birds, I lower it down. Love this, and cardinal loves this. You know, it's not just a tray here, but he's got this edge out here that he can set on, okay? If you don't like one quite that big, hey, there's a one even bigger. You know, that was a starter. Love these things. The folks over at Looker in Illinois taught us how to make them, and we now make these in Missouri, okay? other feeders and this one you know ain't real fancy new and took it right off my deck what well, i tell you red feeder fly through cardinal loves to go in here got sunflower kernels in there but i've learned to sprinkle a little bit of what we call shell free deluxe it has little pieces of peanuts in it and the cardinals love that so do a lot of birds it's amazing i am now really sold on every morning i put a little bit out right for coffee and then uh, all of them start coming. I do the same thing in the evening if we're having a beverage there. So keep that in mind. Just top dress it a little bit that way. And remember what I said on the corner of the deck. I got a small red tray with a, uh, I got one of our squirrel proof domes over it. So fun way to attract cardinals, okay? One of the other things you want to do with cardinals is use a hopper feeder. Because, and remember with any feeder you get, you got to have distance from where the seed comes out to the end, okay? So don't buy a hopper that ends right here because he ain't got nowhere to put his rear, you know? So you got to have room for that. So I like that. Here, look. 
The same way on a window feeder, you know I got a bigger one now for the Cardinal, and then there's all kinds of squirrel proof feeders that, yeah, of course you see a Cardinal on it, but again, you're always going to see the bar back away. And I got to tell you, my number one squirrel proof feeder is the Brown Squirrel Buster up on the table over there, Kevin. I'm going so fast, I'm wearing Kevin out. He's a good man. Okay, this guy here, if my, when people come in the store, I sold several of these Saturday at the open house, and thank all you people in central Missouri that came. But this guy here is a cat's meow if you want cardinals and you don't want squirrels. So I got to put a recommendation in it. And nobody will have a better price than your locally owned store. So go see them, guys. You won't have to buy another bird feeder. This thing feeds everything, and it's guaranteed for life. So I don't make it either, so you know I got to really like it. You know, Really good feeder. Love that thing. The other one I want to make sure is a lot of you like to use a tube feeder, and I got a great big tube feeder from Aspects, another company we love. And look, they got this big old perch off of here, and they got this big old tray on here. So remember, they're practicing what I preach. Lots of room for the Cardinal to set, but if that's not enough room, big old tray down here for him. So I love the Aspects feeder, so you can get them from the, fill them from the top or the bottom. Excuse me, you can get in from the top or the bottom, easy to clean them. And we'll talk about why that's even more important when we get to the finches. Okay, lots of stuff there for Cardinals. So number one thing, Safflower, but most of all, Black Oil Sunflower and Kernels. Kind of like a broken record. Okay, and then... One little treat I might tell you is just add a little bit of them little peanuts I talked about because the cardinals like them just like the rest of the birds, okay? Now we're going to the finches. These were the boys that were having the party at my yard. And I got to tell you, remember I showed you those two red trays? They were covered with pine siskins and their finch buddies. And the chickadees were coming in and the cardinals were coming in. So you don't have to have one of these tube feeders I'm getting ready to show you. I think a lot of people forget how many birds that sunflower kernels will attract and the fact that that one tray or that one hopper or that one uh, fly through at the end of your thing uh, would, uh, you know, would be a way to do it. And if people ask, I see a question up there on the screen, well, how do you keep all these things clean? Well, the number one thing you do is once a month, one part water, excuse me, one part bleach, nine parts water. What I do is I soak them first, clean them really good. You got it, and we got a bunch of different Songbird Essentials brushes. Then I dip them into rinse. And then I let them dry. Make sure you let them dry before you put seed in them, because otherwise you're going to be doing mold. So good question, and God bless you for asking that question, okay? So finches, what kind of finches we got? Well, the number one, you know, you should think about this guy. And he's, of course, the goldfinch. And there's the lesser goldfinch for some of you in Texas and on out west. Whoops, wrong guy. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Oh, he's hiding over here. Kevin had him. Where are you talking to Kevin? Hey. And this is a house finch. And there's also the purple finch. But of course, those pine siskins and the uh, their other buddy, and this is the answer for you, the red poles that are coming down from Canada, they're all part of the Finch family. Everybody's so happy. But I tell you the thing about that, what happened at my yard is not unusual. They love being in parties. Let's all come in together. And that's why, and this was taken, this photo I can take any day, you know, in the spring, there's a period there in May when they're all bright. They have this party every blasted year in Missouri. So if you want a bunch to eat together, when I took this one, it was back when Niger thistle was still not being overcooked. So I was using thistle. Since it's kind of gotten a daylight scooped out of it, and I don't think they eat it as good, we use part that and part fine chopped sunflowers now inside of there. They're eating it like that. So great tip for next spring is have one of these SE3242 feeders out. The finches love it. Other ways to do it, I remember I told you about aspects where they also make a great tube feeder for finches. And, you know, you won't have no uh, thing. It's just a little bitty old hole there that they get that out of. One of my favorites is our copper uh, spiral feeder. They can, uh, and we have this in yellow because it seems like yellow might help attract them. But they can run the perch here and you can feed. One thing I love here is you can fill it from the top one time and the bottom the next. And that's the trick I want to tell you whether you use this feeder or not, you want to always make sure don't keep pouring finch seed on top of finch seed. It gets packed down, that niger thistle, anything, and moisture draws there, okay? So if you don't have one of these feeders, knock all that stuff out of the bucket, look at it, smell it. You know, you might, if it ain't a lot of it, you might want to throw it away. If you keep some blended in, but refill it from the top, then don't keep dumping, 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 because you end up saying, oh, they don't eat from the bottom. Well, wonder why. I wouldn't eat that stuff either, okay? So good food for thought on that thing. And one other feeder I love are these little mesh feeders. And this is my favorite because the entire feeder 
is that feeding thing. So you don't just, you're not limited by the six, eight, ten ports that, you know, one thing I love about the Spyro, it's got ten ports, but hey, this has got a hundred ports in it because everything around there is they can eat. So fun place to put some nitro thistle or better yet, something like our fantastic Finch 2 that's 50% fine chops, uh, sunflower kernels and 50% niger. So really fun way to feed finches. So keep this one in mind, put it on your Christmas present. You wanna attract some pine siskins, load this sucker up with this sort of feed, they come to it, okay? Or put them hearts out on a tray, you know, all that stuff works. There's different things. I don't wanna act like I know the only way. The one thing is lots of these things will attract a lot of different birds. That's the thing about the cardinal feeders. So many of those, if you put the right stuff on it, you don't want to put a mix full of this stuff. We'll talk about this, Miller, because most birds going to eat up there high in the air ain't going to eat this stuff. But we'll tell you now, I think they're next. Let me look. Are they next, Kevin? Yep. Yes, they are. What bird do I oftentimes call the snowbird? Answer me that question, okay? What bird do I often have called the snowbird, okay? And who else eats down there with him, okay? Well, the juncos are the ones I often call the snowbirds because they come in only when it's cold and pretty often, man, if it snows, you know they're going to be there right in front of it. And they are actually one of the birds that like this uh, millet. And if you watch, they're one of the few birds, you know, the other birds, you put it in these other feeders, it goes to the ground. It's just in there to make the seed cheaper. Well, I say spend your money on the black old sunflowers, the sunflower kernels, put some nuts in it, a little safflower, and put the millet on the ground where it's going to end up anyhow. And where are we going to do it? Well, we're going to just, throw, I just throw it some underneath trees and bushes and stuff. Or we sell all different kinds of ground tray feeders. This is a big old honking one I like the best. In the wintertime, I love this during the blizzard because we've got a cover for it. Hi, everybody. Got my big old hat on there. But uh, just a fun way. And guess what? It isn't a coincidence that Mr. Cardinal's on the label as well as the Junkos and stuff. Because as most of you have seen, he likes feeding, you know, at the bottom there on the ground and stuff too. So how are you guys doing out there? It's kind of fun looking through here. I may do the next show looking through a feeder. Here you go, Kevin. Okay. So remember, mill it down low where the juncos go. Okay. And also the cardinals. So they're going to want some sunflowers on there. They're going to look at that millet and say, well, are you kidding me? What are you thinking? You know I don't like that. The other thing I do is I keep some of that millet down there in the spring. A bird called the Intigo bunting. Really brilliant color. He'll be down there. Okay, and speaking of spring, I just want to remind you guys real quick, give me that spring thing. Hummingbirds and Orioles, I threw you for a loop there, Kevin. This Dr. JB's feeder, bottom line is buy a hummingbird feeder that's easy to fill, easy to clean, okay, and is beat and wasp resistant. And this sucker is brand new. And once you open it once, it comes apart a lot easier. But really, really good hummingbird feeder, Dr. JB's. Love it, and the thing I like about it is as more came, I switched to this, and then when lots and lots of birds were there right before they left, I went to this, and all these fit on the same base, so I didn't have to buy a whole bunch of different feeders based on how many hummingbirds were there. And then Orioles, so that's one part sugar, four parts water, or better yet, there's many nectars like our Songbird Essentials, which is finely ground bar sugar, and it instantly mixes, it's easy to go, so I like that, no, no, nothing else. Be careful, what, you know, you want to have pure cane sugar, and then keep that rascal clean. On the Orioles, it's oranges, birdberry jelly that we make, and then uh, nectar in that order, although jelly is what keeps them. And my favorite two feeders are this guy here, the fruit and jelly, that's recycled plastic, and this guy here, the ultimate Oriole feeder. We also got a little feeder that just feeds jelly, but these two give you at least two out of the three, and this one has all three of the three, so lots of fun. We won't talk much, because that's spring bird, okay? Bluebirds. Here in Missouri and in many places, bluebirds are still here. And you, can you feed bluebirds? People say, yep. Yeah. And I got to tell you, remember those kernels in that tray? During a blizzard, bluebirds almost always come to my feeder looking for them. Even robins come. Now, I chase them boogers off sometimes because they get bossy on a feeder. But feeders like this is what we feed the bluebirds in. Although I start with a pan and then I have a little steak feeder with a little feeder that I forgot to grab here tonight. I love that because I can move it around, move it closer to the house or away in the springtime. But in the wintertime, I put them in here a lot of times. And live meal worms are what I'm talking about. You can get them from your local wild bird store or store that's serious about birding. Or we got dried meal worms. Okay. And you mix, you know, one thing I've learned is mix a little bit of olive oil with these to feed the bluebirds. They love it a lot better than dry. But... Lots of other birds will want to eat them mealworms. That's why you have this feeder. 
where just the bluebirds and only a couple other birds will go in there and eat those, okay? So, you know, Mr. Robin wish he could go in, but he done got too fat to go through that hole, you know? So that's how you get your mealworm dollars to the birds you want them to, okay? And go back and look. We got a whole session on feeding bluebirds, raising bluebirds uh, that's posted in our Birdman Mail Facebook and Birdman Mail uh, dot com archives so look it up i am going to be filming putting up uh finishing putting up a bluebird house i started this weekend and this weekend we're going to go ahead and put that rascal up so i will be showing you the best way to put up a bluebird house and some of my favorite ways to protect it okay we're almost done last but not least my children often called this guy the bossy bossy blue jay he can be a booger he kind of drives stuff away, but you know what? He also serves a function. He tells them when a cat's around, a snake's around, an owl's around. He's really good at that. And he has one favorite food that I make sure I have out for him. And no, I didn't get these at the ball game, unfortunately, because there wasn't, you know, no way to see that, but unsalted whole peanuts. They love those things. And you can just, I actually toss, I have to confess, I have one, had one of these, and they love it eating them out of these, but I actually toss just a few handfuls of this Remember my little treat? I throw out a little handful of this. Well, I throw out a few of these for the Blue Jays on those trays and that fly through, okay? And then in the spring when I want to give this guy a whole lot because, you know, mama's going to have babies and all this stuff going on. Visitors are coming in. Then you feel that thing up. All right, when I'm in a good mood, I got so many squirrels. That's why I don't do this, and I can't squirrel-proof everything. But, you know, when I'm feeling good, then I feel the whole ring. And people, you know, it's the one thing you'll see on here, these folks out west, the Stellar Jays love these too. This is one of the few feeders has got a Stellar Jay photo on it. So lots of good stuff for Jays, okay? So, uh, wow, we went fast. I hope I didn't go too fast. I hope you learned some tips. Send some questions on the birds you wish you could attract more of. I'll try to keep answering your questions. And we'll go from there, okay? And I do want to thank you so much. Keep those questions coming. My daughter Becky's at home. She's going to be helping us. And I want to thank her a lot for helping me get them questions back out to you. And don't forget, keep submitting those, start submitting those photos of Songbird Essential Feeders. And uh, we'll be sending you some prizes for that, okay? And I hope to see you next week. Move over, Oprah Renthe. We're going to end this session. We're going to take a little break after this for Christmas and probably up until the spring, but we're going to talk about, somebody said, would you please do a show on your favorites? What's your favorite house? What's your favorite accessory? What's your favorite feeder? What's your favorite, you know, if you're just going to buy one bird bath, what would it be? What's your favorite gifts? And the one I'm looking forward to the most is what are my favorite things that I've either already given my grandkids or I'd recommend you do in the future. So, or your children. So look, there'll be a lot of neat fab categories. If you want to know my favorite or something, let me know. Send in, you know, go ahead and post a comment ahead of time and we'll try to address that. But speaking of kids, I do got to say, I want to show something. Those of you in Missouri, if you haven't already opened that most recent, we're lucky in Missouri, our Missouri Conservation Department puts out an incredible magazine that comes right to your door if you ask for it. And they just had the neatest thing out of making a cardinal pine cone thing. You, you make use a couple pine cones to make a cardinal uh, display and we're going to be posting this in the next two days so be watching for it and those of you in Missouri make sure you open that up fun fun thing to do with children and grandchildren okay really really neat so uh, keep that in mind and, and gonna try to post as we go on through the winter particularly as we go toward Christmas some fun ways to decorate outside for the birds fun things to do with the children all that sort of thing so keep that in mind before I close I do also want to say hey thank you Kevin for all your help. Thank you, Ben, who's in here doing all my IT work. He's doing all the camera action, moving things up, down, all around. And thank you, Erica, and thank you, Annette, that's at home. They help us get this show up ahead of time. They do, they're the ones that help make them photos show up as far as the winners there of the owl contest and different things. So this is not just a one-man show. I couldn't do it without all these great people here. And I do appreciate the entire crew here at Songbird Essentials who helps us make those great products and get them to you going to end like I do every time saying don't forget every day to just take a moment slow down look around see what God created it's a pretty neat earth just sit there in one spot if you can with a child or a grandchild and touch listen look it's amazing what's out there the thing that I always try to remember is nature is a stress reliever from God take time today to listen to the birds sing folks thanks very much for joining us I hope somewhere in there was a tip that you could use and see you next week for Sorry, Oprah. Birdman Mel's favorite items. Thanks again.